Alright, welcome. I'm going to talk to you today about the why, what, and the how of user namespaces, uh, specifically how we use them in the Docker engine. But first, uh, let's think about the why. So, you probably already know that containers are really a set of isolation mechanisms that uh, mainly the Linux kernel gives us. There are already several uh, in use today in Docker and other container engines. And user namespaces is just one of the youngest or one of the newest namespaces for isolation that adds in the capability to isolate the user and group ranges that exist inside your container versus on the host. So if that sounds a little confusing, let's step back and think about three very popular namespaces that are used every time you Docker run a container. That may give us a, a foundation for thinking about how user namespaces adds to that isolation. So for example, if we take the PID and the mount and the network namespace, these namespaces isolate us from three very important constructs in Linux. First of all, thanks to the PID namespace, when we run our container, it looks like we're the only process on the system. We don't see or have visibility to all the other processes running on our host. Similarly, thanks to the mount namespace, our root file system and any mounts we've added to our container are all that we see when we look at the file system inside our container. We don't see any of the mounts on the host. We don't have visibility or access to them. Again, thanks to this mount namespace isolation. Taking the network namespace, now inside our container, if we have a network namespace, only those network devices and routes available to us through the container process are what we can see as far as routing traffic or access to network devices. We don't see any of the devices on the host. And so similar to these three namespaces, user namespaces adds this ability. Again, it won't be about visibility because IDs are just a, a number on the system. But in a similar sense, the user namespace allows us to shift the range of user IDs used inside our container so they're separated and different from the user uh, and group ranges used on the host. So why is this valuable for us to have this user namespace? One of the most important reasons that, that people are using user namespaces is to not use the real root of the system inside a container. Were there to be some kind of escape or security situation where we could access host information, if we were the real administrative root user, we could potentially do much damage on our host. And so the user namespace, having this shifted ID and uh, for groups and users, allows us to not be real root on the host, but in our container have root-like capabilities. And we'll talk some more about what are the restrictions and, and differences of root in a user namespaces versus the real root on the host. Okay, so we've looked a little bit about the why of user namespaces, a little bit of the what, and uh, just to add to that, to give us a broader sense of how they're actually used before we get into how Docker uses them. If you're using a modern Linux distribution, your distribution already has support for user namespaces, and one of the ways that that's visible to you is to look at two files on your host, slash etc slash sub uid and slash etc slash sub gid and these two files contain assigned ranges for users on your host and so again in a modern distribution that's up to date all the utilities around adding and removing users has support to create these ranges so that you've already been assigned this subordinate range that your user is able to administer when you use user namespaces. And so let's take a look at my system. If I look at those two files, you can see that my ID Estes P has already been assigned a user and group range in those subordinate ID files I just mentioned. In my case, my ranges start at 165,536 and is 65,536 IDs in length. For a little bit of background on why these numbers seem so specific, the original ID type in Linux was a 16-bit unsigned number. So if you know about the size and capacity of that number, that's basically 64K, giving us 65,536 possible IDs. And so 
Traditionally, Linux distributions, as they've created IDs and groups, have rarely ever attempted to assign any ID higher than the 64K sort of soft limit. And that means that in, in the user namespace world, we can basically hand out 64K slices of this now very large ID space now that that number is a 32-bit unsigned integer. And so now with over 4 billion IDs available, we could basically have 65,000 different ID slices of that entire range without any of them using IDs from the other spaces. Okay, so now we have the why and the what. Let's think about how spaces are actually used in the Docker engine. So since Docker 1.10, the ability to enable user namespaces has been added to the engine. It's a daemon-specific configuration flag. That flag is dash dash user ns dash remap. You can also use the nice slash etc slash docker slash daemon dot json config file and enable both turning on and off the feature there. What you can provide to this flag, the simplest way is to simply give it the string default. And when you do that, the Docker engine will by itself create a user for you on the host that isn't already existing. And because of your distribution tooling, will be assigned a new user and group ID range in the subordinate ID files. So if you start your daemon with this enabled, you'll see a new user created, the doc remap user, and it will be assigned a range. And when you run containers, these containers will actually use this ID mapping. So one of the, there'll be two ways that we can inspect that we have user namespaces enabled once we've done this in the daemon configuration. I'm going to show you here that as I type docker info, there's two ways that I can tell I have user namespaces enabled in my daemon. One of the ways is to look at the list of security features that are enabled. So maybe you see set comp there. You'll also see user ns listed in the security features enabled if you have successfully turned on user namespaces in your daemon. Another thing we can look at is the docker root directory. And the Docker root directory is by default slash var slash lib slash docker. And if user namespaces have been turned on, the root of the ID space that's used will be appended to that. So in my case, you can see that it says slash var slash lib slash docker slash 165.536.165.536. And so basically, what we've done here is we've created a new sort of root of the image cache in my daemon, because now when I docker pull images with user namespaces enabled, I have to actually shift the file, sh file system ownership of all the files in these layers of the images to match this new range. And in a more advanced coverage of user namespaces, we'll talk about why we have to do that and work that's ongoing in the upstream Linux kernel community to improve the ability to share layers with different mappings. One of the common complaints that, that we've seen with people trying out user namespaces that's very related to what I just spoke about, this different Docker root directory, is that once they have user namespaces enabled, they might type Docker images and get basically a blank list in return. This is because now that we have a different Docker root directory, none of the images that, that we had when we had user namespaces turned off is shown in this new root directory. We now have to repull these images. Again, that's a constraint that hopefully is somewhat temporary. But if you turn off user namespaces, restart your daemon, you'll see that all the images you already had access to are still there. But again, because of the need to shift the ownership of those files, they have to be repulled when we start with user namespaces enabled. To finish out this segment, we're going to actually Docker run a container. Here are my prompt. Again, now that I have user namespaces enabled, there's no more flags or settings that I have to do to use user namespaces. But when I run any container, it's automatically going to be isolated inside a user namespace with the ranges that we've already looked at. So here I'm Docker running an Alpine container, starting a shell. And so if I go on my host and I look at the, the PS output and find that shell process, here you can see the user ID that's running that shell process. 
It's not root, it's ID 165536, which is the root of my re remapped ID range that we've already looked at. So that looks right. We can also look at the special at some special files in the slash proc file system and see what the Linux kernel believes the mappings are for that process. So let's take that process ID. I can now cat slash proc slash process ID slash UID underscore map. And we can see the mapping there. I can also cat the GID underscore map file in the same location. And you can see that the Linux kernel believes that our mapping is taking the ID 165536, mapping that to zero or root, and the length of that mapping range is 65536. So this looks exactly like what we asked for. So it appears everything is working. We're getting user namespace isolation in our container. So in our next installment, well, uh, we'll look at some of the restrictions that the Linux kernel places on user namespaces, some of the complexities of using volumes, and other things that people have, have run into as they've started to use user namespaces. So thanks for watching, and hope you get to try user namespaces in your Docker daemon in the near future.